Praise the Lord, friends. I am so glad that you tuned in today. We've got a special lineup of broadcast this week talking about unconditional love. And you know what? If you get a revelation of the love of God for you, it will change your life. And actually, on the first uh, two days of this broadcast on Monday and Tuesday, uh, we talked about getting a revelation of the love of God for you. We talked about the demonstration of love, being secure in the love of God, getting established in the love. So we talked about the love of God for us. But today, I'm going to talk about a revelation of the love of God in you. You know, the Bible says in Romans 5, verse 5, that the love of God is shed in a, abroad in our heart by the Holy Spirit that's given to you. And if you're born again, if you've received Jesus as your Lord, the Spirit of Christ dwells in you. Romans 8, 9 says, If any man has not the Spirit of Christ, he is none of his. So as a born-again believer, you have the Spirit of Christ in you. And since you have the Spirit of Christ in you, the Spirit of Christ in you is, is what really... Uh, gives you victory and, 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 and having the Spirit of Christ. The Spirit of Christ is love. Part, that is part of the Spirit of Christ. In fact, the Bible says this. The fruit of the Spirit in Galatians 5 verse 22 is love. And then it says joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, and temperance against such there is no law. So all of these other eight fruit of the Holy Spirit flow forth from the supernatural fruit of love because God is love. The fruit of the Spirit is love. When you understand the love of God for you and the love of God in you, from that flows joy. Thank God for the joy of the Lord. The Bible says the joy of the Lord is our strength. From that flows peace. From that flows long-suffering or patience. You know, gentleness, goodness, faith. The Bible says that faith works by love. Faith works when you understand the love of God for you. That's in uh, Galatians 5 verse 6 prior to this. And meekness, and that's understanding who you're in Christ. That, that flows from an understanding of, of the love of God in you. And temperance, self-control. When you understand God's love for you, when you get a revelation of the love of God for you, did you know what? That'll help you control yourself. Some people don't have a lot of self-control, temperance. And you know what? They need to get a revelation of the love of God for them. And if you get a revelation of the love of God, it will change your life. Now, when you begin to understand, now when the Bible says, I want to hit on this for just a minute. When the Bible says in Galatians 5 verse 22 that the fruit of the Spirit is love, that is not talking about a feeling. Did you know that is talking about a spiritual reality? It is a spiritual reality. If you are born again, if Christ lives in you, you have the love of God in you because you have the spirit of Christ in you. So what are the results of the love of God in us? Well, the first thing is we are not disappointed. We are not ashamed. Did you know in Romans chapter 5, verse 5, the Bible actually says this, that hope does not make a shame because the love of God is shed abroad in our heart by the Holy Ghost that is given to us. The love of God is shed abroad. Thank God for the love of God that we have in our heart. And you know what? Uh, you're not going to be disappointed when you get a revelation of the love of God. Now, I'm going to go to Romans chapter 5, and we're going to read these verses, Romans chapter 5, and verse 1 through 5. This is a powerful uh, revelation. You don't need to be disappointed today. Amen. You can get a revelation that God is a good God, that God loves you, and that God has good things for you. Now look at this in Romans 5.1. The scripture says, therefore being justified by faith. Or I love, you know, the New King James in this. It says, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. We're at peace with God. By whom we have received access by faith into grace. So by Jesus, we have received access into grace and we stand in grace and rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. And, and so when you are justified by faith, you're at peace with God. And so, and, and by Jesus, you have access by faith into grace. We stand in grace. So when I'm standing and believing God for something, 
I don't say, God, I prayed, I read my Bible, I gave, I, I don't say I went to church, I was kind of, I don't plead my case based on what I did because all my righteousness is as filthy rags. It means nothing. I plead my case based on the blood of Jesus, based on what Jesus did for me. So he says now, he says, we have peace with God through Jesus, and by Jesus we have access. By faith, we believe God in, in grace. We, in grace, in grace. Access by faith. Faith accesses the grace of God. And what is grace? Grace is what God did for us in the person of Jesus when he died and rose again. Praise God, when you begin to understand the greatness of the grace of God, of what God did for you in the person of Jesus, you're, you won't have a faith problem. Praise God. And so it says, by faith into grace wherein we stand and we rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. In other words, we are looking for the manifestation of the presence of God, the power of God, the promise of God, the purpose of God. Amen. We rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. Now, look at what he goes on to say. So we're looking for good things. I hope, you know what? Hope is really positive expectation and faith is the substance of things hoped for so you should have a positive expectation in the gospel because you're you're expecting the promise of god you're expecting right the presence of god the provision of god you're expecting those things because of what jesus has done but not only this he says but what if what if you have what if you start believing god and it seems we have problems he says not only so we glory in tribulation when trouble comes now i'm going to read you a scripture i'm going to show you something here really quickly today in hebrews chapter 10 hebrews chapter 10 verse 35 the scripture says this cast not away therefore your confidence which has a great repayment of reward he says, for you have need of patience that after you have done the will of God, you might receive the promise. Thank God we can receive the promise. You know, he says, for yet a little while and he that shall come will come and not tarry. He says, now the just shall live by faith. And if any man draw back, no, my soul will have no pleasure in him. And he says, but we are not of those who draw back to perdition or to judgment, but of those who believe to the saving of the soul. That's verse 39. Now, but just before this, in verse 32, Hebrews 10, verse 32. Now notice what Romans 5, 3 says, not only do we glory and, and, you know, and look for positive expectations because we have faith in the grace of God and what Jesus did, but we glory when trouble comes. Now look at this. In Hebrews 10, verse 32, he says, call to remembrance the former days and after you were first illuminated, you remember when you first heard the full gospel preached? When you first heard that it was God's will to heal you? When you first heard that it was God's will to prosper you? When you first heard that it was God's will to give you peace and help you in every area of life? And that God was good and only wanted to do good? Call to remembrance the former days and after you were first illuminated, you endured a great fight of affliction. I mean, you start believing God for healing and it's just like maybe you put a target on your back, but you keep believing God for healing. You know why? Because God is faithful and God keeps his word. And, and you know what? You stand and you believe. He says, you endured a great fight of afflictions, partly while you were made a gazing stock by reproaches and afflictions, and partly while you became companions of those who were so used. In other words, other people are watching you, gazing stock. And, and you know, you started believing God and all of a sudden you had reproaches, afflictions, and, and your companions of others who, who, who were maybe rejected by the world. But then he says this, you had compassion on me and my bonds took joyfully the spoiling of your goods. You kept giving, you kept believing, knowing in yourselves that you have in heaven a better and enduring substance, knowing that praise God I'm given, but praise God heaven's rewards are for me. And, and you know what? You cannot outgive God. But then he says this, do not throw away your confidence, which has a great repayment of reward so you keep believing god because it has a great repayment of reward for you have need of patience that after you have done the will of god you might receive the promise i'm telling you so many people give up before they receive their harvest but i'm here to tell you do not give up never ever quit believing god you know the bible says that you know if, if you if you know just keep believing in be followers of those who through faith and patience inherit the promises it says be not weary and well doing for in due season you shall reap if you do not faint so do not faint before your harvest 
So he says, we don't only glory when we're looking for good things, but we don't only rejoice, but we glory when trouble comes. Knowing that trouble works patience. Tribulation works patience. This is Romans 5, 3 again. He says, and patience experience. You see, what will happen if you're facing problems, trouble, and you patiently believe the promise. Now, you, if you're struggling with sickness, you'd find promises that have to do with healing and divine healing, and you believe God for that. Right? If you're struggling with financial lack, you find scriptures that have to do with financial prosperity, and you believe God for that. He says, we, he says, we, we glory in tribulation, knowing that tribulation works patience and patience experience. What will happen if you patiently believe God? The Bible says again, in Hebrews 6, 12, be followers of those who faith, through faith and patience inherit the promise. And patience works experience. You will experience the faithfulness of God and experience works hope. Why do we hope when, when you have experience? Well, you know what? God blessed me once. He'll bless me again. God helped me once. He'll help me again. God, you know, God, God, you know, healed me once. He'll heal me again. Let me give you an example. Uh, you know, in, in 1998, I believe it was, 1997 or 8, we were living in Kit Carson, Colorado. And I had, you know, a bunch of cattle. And it was late in October. It was actually October the 24th because it was my son Andrew's birthday. He says, Daddy, this is the best birthday I ever had. But it was a Friday night. And, you know, we, we had cattle there, and I, I pastored a church and had cattle, had a small feed lot, and, you know, fed cattle and grew cattle on the side to make extra money. And, and anyway, we went to the ball game, and all of a sudden they announced, hey, there is going to be a blizzard. And we had, we had about, you know, a dozen kids or something staying that night in our house. We had a house, you know, just right east of the city limits, north, north east corner of the city limits. And Kit Carson's really small town, you know, we're talking about 300 people a mile long, you know, east to west, maybe just a little over a half mile north to south. But it's not, I mean, just kind of, kind of a T, you know, there's people on the highway and, and in the main part of town, but there, there's, there's not a lot of people there. And back then it was about 300. It's less today. We had three restaurants at the height when we were there. To, I went back there to visit and pray for a man good friend of mine recently, and they don't have one restaurant operating. It's just really tragic what's happened in some of these rural communities. But, but it's a great town, you know, great school, and, you know, a lot of strong believers there. Thank God for those Christian friends that we had and the relationships that we have. We still have relationships there with these godly people. But, you know, we're talking about 30, 30 years ago that I went there and started this church, and, and in Church of the Redeemed in Kit Carson. But, you know, that blizzard came in, I, and this is 1998. So, uh, man, you know, 1997 or 8, October, and, and we had those kids at our house, and I had cattle all over the country, and, you know, I prayed and believed God. Now, we had that blizzard hit, and I, and I owed a lot of money, and I had cattle all over, spread around different places. And, you know, I ended up losing $100,000 for that blizzard, but you know what I did? I believed God. And, you know, the Bible says if a thief be found, you know what, you... you um, He'll have to repay seven times. And we know that God is not the author of death, destruction, lack, or loss. And so I believe God. And you know what? I got that 100000 back not once. I got it back seven times. But it took me about a year to get the initial 100000 back that I lost in that blizzard. And, um, you know, I, I kept going. And then we moved up here to Colorado Springs. And, 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 and amazingly enough, God enabled me to continue in the cattle business. And I had different people that worked for me and helped me while I was in Kit Carson because the last three years I traveled. So I grew that cattle business. And, and you know, the beginning of 2004, or end of 2004, beginning of 2005, um, we had a terrible blizzard. And I had over 3,000 head of cattle scattered all over, you know, eastern Colorado, northeastern Colorado, southeastern Colorado, Kansas, Nebraska. I mean, I had cattle everywhere. And uh, that blizzard hit, and you know, that thing cost me about a quarter million dollars. Now, the good news is I didn't go broke. And I had one of my good friends tell me, Lawson, you're really fortunate. You didn't go broke. You didn't go absolutely bankrupt. But thank God, God took care of me. God provided for me, and I came out of that. But you know what I knew? Now, this is, I'm using this example because this happened to me in 1998. And you know what I did? I believed God, and I came out of it. And in 2004, 2005, that winter, it happened to me again. 
And you know what I did? I believed God and I came out of it. But I, I not, listen, if I get ripped off by the devil, I don't only believe God to get it back. I believe back God to get it back seven times. Because if thief be found, he's got to repay seven times. So I believe God and that came back to me. And I'm here to tell you that God is no respecter of persons. He's a respecter of faith. And maybe you've lost. But listen, you know what? You keep believing God. You keep believing the promises of God. You can come out of that. Keep giving. Keep believing God. Keep trusting God. God will bring you out. And so he says, what, knowing that tribulation works patience, patience experience. If you patiently believe God, you'll experience the faithfulness of God. And experience works hope. And hope does not make a shame. You know why I knew I could believe God the second time? Because I believed God the first time. Because I knew what the Word said too. And, and he says, hope makes not a shame because the love of God is shed abroad in our heart by the Holy Ghost that's given to us. The love of God. So listen, when you know how much God loves you, you know that he is for you. You know that he's good. You know that he has good things for you. So you do not need to be disappointed today. You keep believing God no matter what, what's went wrong. Praise God. You believe God for good. And if evil comes, you keep believing God for good. And you, you know what? You'll get everything you believe God for. I've been believing God a long time. And I'm here to tell you God's been good to me. And I've been believing God for over 40 years since I heard the full gospel preach. And I continue to believe God and life continues to get better. So when you get a revelation of the love of God, you're not disappointed. Number two, you're not afraid. You know, the Bible actually says this in 1 John 4. I th think it's verse 18, but it says perfect love. We'll read it in just a little bit. Cast out all fear. But in Galatians chapter 5, verse 6, it says, In Christ Jesus, neither circumcision nor uncircumcision avails anything but faith that works by love. In other words, it's not law keeping. It's not what you did or what you did not do. It's faith. And faith works when you understand the love of God for you. Now, 2 Timothy 1, verse 7 says this. It says, God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and love and a sound mind. So we don't have a spirit of faith a spirit of fear. We have a spirit of faith. So we don't need to be afraid. Now, let's look at this in 1 John. In 1 John chapter 4, I'm going to talk about a little bit, again, getting a revelation of the love of God for you. And when you get that, what happens? Number one, you're not disappointed. But number two, you don't need to be afraid. And you know, the only fear you really need to have is a fear of God. And if you fear God, you don't need to fear anything else. There's so many people that are just overtaken with fear. And so much of the teaching in the body of Christ and the bad news in the world has just brought fear. Listen, don't believe everything you hear. You believe the word of God and what the promise of God says. Now, look at this in 1 John chapter 4, verse 16. Whoever will confess that Jesus is the son of God, God dwells in him and he in God. And we have known and believed the love that God has toward us. God is love, and he who dwells in love dwells in God, and God in him. Herein is our love made perfect. Herein is our love made whole or complete, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment. Glory to God, we can have boldness in the day of judgment. We can have confidence in the day of judgment. Because as he is, so are we in this world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out all fear, for fear has torment. You don't want to be tormented by the devil. You want to torment the devil. You ought to be the one tormenting the devil. You know the Bible says the gates of hell will not prevail against us. Amen. The gates of hell will not prevail against the church that Jesus builds. The gates of hell will not prevail against those who have a revelation of who Jesus is and their authority in Christ. Amen. So thank God he that fears is not made perfect in love. We say that I love him because he first loved us. If a man loved God he, and hates his brother, he's a liar. For he that loves not his brother who he has seen, how can he love God? And this is the commandment we have from him. He who loves God loves his brother also. That's 1 John chapter 4, verse 13 to verse 18. Now, what's he saying as we look at this? He said, number one, we need to confess that Jesus is the Son of God. Whoever confesses Jesus is the Son of God. Have you confessed Jesus as your Savior? Jesus said, He who confesses me before men, I'll confess before my Father. He who denies me before men, I will deny before my Father. So if you've never made a confession of Jesus Christ as Lord, you need to do that. Then he goes on and says, We have known. So not only we need to confess Jesus as Lord, but we need to come to know and believe the love that God has for us. I like to say that we have known and continue to believe the love that God has for us. So confess Jesus is Lord, get a revelation, know, and, and it's talking about a revelation knowledge there, and continue to believe in the love that God has for you. Then take up residence. He that dwells in love dwells in God and God in him. Then we have confidence 
right? He says, he that herein is our love made complete that we may have confidence or boldness in the day of judgment because he, as he is, so are we in this world. Jesus is righteous and we're righteous. There's no fear in love, but perfect love casts out all fear and fear has torment. So when we really get to understand this, that we don't need to be afraid, we come to know and believe that we confess Jesus and God dwells in us. Then we come to know and continue to believe in the love of God. That pr 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 produces boldness. That produces freedom from fear. And that produces wholeness. We are complete in him who is the head of the principality and authority. Now, we're not afraid, but not only this, we love God. Amen? Now, if people are acting badly, did you realize it's because they have no revelation? of the love of God for them. I'm telling you, the people need to get a revelation of the love of God. Let me show you this, 1 John chapter 3, verse 6. Whoever abides in him, whoever has taken up residence in him does not sin. Whoever sins has not seen him, neither known him. You, you, know, you need to see, get a revelation of who Jesus is and get, get, come to know him personally and intimately. Get a revelation of the love of God. Whoever abides in him, taking up residence, it does not sin. Little children, let no man deceive you. He who does righteousness is righteous, even as he is righteous. He who commits sin is of the devil. For the devil sins from the beginning. For this purpose was the Son of God revealed or manifest, made known, that he might destroy the works of the devil. Jesus came to absolutely annihilate the works of the devil. Whoever is born of God, are you born of God, does not commit sin. For his seed remains in him and he cannot sin. Now, this is not talking about your flesh. I, you know, if you'd ask me if I've sinned since I've been saved, I'll, let, I'll raise my, both hands. But I'm not talking about sins in my spirit. I'm talking about sins in my body. I haven't rejected Jesus. Okay? So he says... Whoever is born of God does not commit. You're not in the habit of practicing sin, right? For his seed remains in him. The seed of God, Jesus, is in you. And he cannot sin because he's born of God. In this, the children of God are manifest. The children of God are made known in the children of the devil. You can tell a tree by its fruit. Whoever does not the righteousness of God is not of God. Neither is he who loves not our brother, his brother. So keep loving God. Now, this is a result of the love of God in us. Number one, we're not disappointed. Number two, we're not afraid. And as we're not afraid, we confess Jesus and God dwells in us. We have uh, come to know and believe in the love of God. We're bold. We, we're bold. We're confident. We're free from fear and we're whole and we love God. Amen. And you love God. You don't have to act badly. Now, finally, we're, we're not only not disappointed and not afraid and love God, but we're victorious through the love of God for us. Now, in Romans 8, verse 37, it says, we're more than conquerors through him that loved us. And so, did you know that Jesus already won the battle? Jesus already won the victory. And because he won it, you know the, de the definition of more than conqueror. You, you got a great prize fighter, and he goes, and man, he battles in the round. He might go 15 rounds and maybe get his brain beat out, but he wins the battle. Finally, he knocks out the other guy and comes out. He's bloody, he's beat. And they give him this big prize and this big purse, and he goes home. Hey, baby, I won. And honey says, thank you. She takes it from him. See, he's the one that fought the battle. He's the one that got in the ring. He's the one that destroyed the enemy. He's the one that received the purse. Praise God, but she's the one that took it. So you got to take what's yours. And you're victorious through the love of God. You see, the Bible tells us we're more than conquerors through him who loved us. The Bible tells us that love never fails in 1 Corinthians 13, verse 8. The Bible tells us that now abide these three, faith, hope, and love, but the greatest of these is love. In, first, in Corinthians chapter 13, verse 13. And then in 1 John chapter 5, verse 1 through 5, it talks about believing. Whoever believes that Jesus is the Son of God is born of God. And when you're born of God, you know what? You keep the commandments. This is the this is the love of God that we keep the commandments. His commandments are not grievous. And so it's not about, you know, us trying to approach God because we keep the commandments. It's because the love of God is in us and Christ lives in us, which changes how we live. And now because of that, we are believing and overcoming. Whoever believes that Jesus is the Son of God overcomes this world. The Bible talks about this. And this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. Amen. So what is the result? Of the love of God in us, number one, we're not disappointed. Number two, we're not afraid. Number three, we love God. And number four, we're victorious through the love of God 
for us. Amen. Jesus already won the victory. And you can have that victory through Jesus. Well, friends, I hope that you've enjoyed the broadcast today. I've been teaching from my series, Unconditional Love. And uh, we're going to be, you know, continuing on this tomorrow. So tell your friends. And I've got a special offer going this week. Anybody, this is a three CD teaching series. And anybody who does not, uh, is not partnering with us, if you'd like to receive, and if you're partnering with us, you can get the same offer. We're going to mail this to you free of charge just for becoming a partner this week on unconditional love. Thank you so much, and God bless you. We'd love to hear from you. I believe the Caris Christian Center in Grace for Today, this is good ground, friends. We spend hundreds and thousands of dollars a year, you know, on staff and on all these broadcasts. But thank God our partners help us. We, we get calls every week from not only here in the United States but around the world people who are watching our broadcast, tuning in, and the Word of God is changing their life. And so we invite you to come and be a partner with us and help us share the gospel, not only here in Colorado Springs and Colorado, and, you know, all around the United States of America, but around the world, praise God. And I believe that sowing into the gospel will, will cause you to reap an eternal reward. Thank you so much and God bless you. Let me pray for you before I go off the air. If you want personal prayer, just give us a call today. We would love to hear from you. Heavenly Father, thank you for all of these, our partners. Thank you for all of these, our viewers. God, I ask that you'd strengthen them and help them as they recognize and get a revelation of your love for them. In Jesus' name, amen. Thanks for watching Grace for Today. This broadcast is made possible by our faithful partners. If you would like to become a partner, need prayer, or have a question, please call us at 719-418-4000 or go to LawsonPurdue.com or write us at P.O. Box 63733, Colorado Springs, Colorado, 80962. See you next time on Grace for Today.